Hi guys, welcome to Trail Talk. We are here live from our classroom studio at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center, coming to you live from Duncan, Oklahoma, of course. We are here today with Commander Bobby Marshall. So we would like to welcome you from the Dobbs Adam Post 55 of the American Legion. Is that all? Yes, correct? it's an honor to be here today. We thank you for joining us. You may be wondering where Edie's at. She is under the weather. So we hope you get to feeling better. So that's why um, you guys get to see me today. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started here talking to Commander Bobby Marshall. So you have a lot of fun things going on and getting started around town, is that right? Absolutely. Uh, we've been really busy this year, um, starting all the way back in February where we reinstituted our four chaplain ceremonies and it's been a nonstop roller coaster of fun since then. I mean, it's a lot of work, but we enjoy every bit of it. Mm -hmm. Um, like in June, we had the dehydrator. We ran a, one of the dehydration stations out here mm -hmm. and enjoyed it immensely. Fourth of July, I mean, we, we hit Comanche's events. Probably we not the place that you don't go to on the board. Pretty much. <laughs> it, it's, it, it, is, it, it does seem that way. Um, and then, of course, you know, getting here, especially into the Halloween and then the holiday seasons mm -hmm. there and afterwards, uh, there is just a nonstop parade of things going on. Right, yeah. I'm sure it does keep you busy on your toes for everything. <clears throat> There's some uh, at the Chisholm, is it still called the Chisholm Trail Mall here in town? Or what is it Chisholm called Mall. now? Chisholm uh, Mall. Chisholm Mall is what, uh, what the sign shows at. Almost people in town call it Chisholm Trail. Yes, it's, it's been several different names. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some things going on down there. What yes. what's going on down at the mall? Um, well, they have been, uh, as everybody knows, the the mall kind of faded out there for a while. Right, as malls all over the country mm -hmm. did. There has been a group that have been working really hard to revitalize it. They've been getting a lot more stores back in there. Uh -huh. um, a lot of the older um, people in town remember back in the day when the the um, actual fountain inside the mall used to actually work for I years. It never that. did. <laughs> well, it's working again. Really? They got it repaired. It's functioning again. Uh, so the, a lot of things are progressing with it. Um, mm -hmm. Plus a lot of the events they've been doing, like we had back to school bash out there. Matter of fact, this weekend, uh, or not this weekend, but uh, this Halloween, they're giving out candy out there. We'll be out there as well with them. They've got uh, plans in place beginning for a Christmas uh, event up there in December. They're, and that's inside the mall itself. Yes, inside mm -hmm. the mall itself mm -hmm. that they're setting up vendors and having things go on. That way we can get a lot more community involvement again, get a lot more people out and about right. since COVID. Yes. Get, up, get everybody yeah. in the community interacting mm -hmm. with them. Right, good. Well, I know that we kind of got involved here at the museum because we do have our Cow Pokes and our Wranglers program, which is a, our program that we host here twice a year and so we had the coloring pages oh amazing. so some of our kids had actually turned them in and so we held on to them so that we could give them to you so these coloring pages have been given and turned into us by our cowpokes and our wranglers and if i understand correctly these are going to be hung in the mall yes absolutely um our veterans day event coming up obviously is november 11th on veterans day itself um we are going to be placing all of these up on display mm -hmm. along with uh, letters that some of the students write we've contacted all the duncan school uh system they've agreed to it mm -hmm. and then everything we get in we're going to actually post up and then once the event is over, for the veterans that weren't able to make it to see it, we're actually going to take these around to the different nursing homes that they're in and oh, deliver awesome. them to them and say, hey, these are right the children, day. you know, that want to make sure you understand who are still appreciated. Right, right. I love that. I absolutely love that. I know when my daughter was in um, grade school, they would get a thing. And so if you had a family member, you know, you put their picture and you walk in and the whole hallway would just be covered, absolutely. you know, with photos and letters and colors. And I mean, it was just... It was an amazing sight to see that it was still people were recognizing and taking the time to do that. And I love that you guys are going back and giving back to them. Uh, additionally, uh, going beyond just the, the children in the schools with these, uh, we're calling out for anybody in the area at all that does have any kind of old military photos of family members, just write a small little bio, get mm -hmm. us a copy mm -hmm. of the image. Mm -hmm. We're going to post those up as veterans of Duncan, veterans of Stevens County, and put them on display as well. They're in the mall? Yes. Mm -hmm. During this event, they will be put up as well. Okay. Um, we will be sure to get that information, so if anyone calls here, we'll have that for them to do as well. <clears throat> so more on to you here. So we're going to dive right in. Are you ready? 
So are you originally from Duncan in this area? No, actually, I was born and raised uh, just outside of Dallas, Texas, um, in a little town. Well, I call it a little town. There's only a couple million people from Darling. <laughs> <laughs> For Texas standards, it's a little right. Um, no, and then uh, I was raised there all the way through high school, and then I left for the military, and after getting out, I traveled around for a bit, and then settled down here in Duncan. Just happened to land here. Pretty much. No family or anything that brought you here? Actually, uh, my mom and pop, uh, my stepfather, I called mm -hmm. him pop, they lived in Rush Springs at the time, so okay. I stopped in. This is a metropolis there. thing considered. I stopped in with them and, and looked for a place, found a place here in Duncan, uh, Fell in love with it. Uh, my sister ended up moving over into Marlowe. So, oh, yeah. made it a family thing. Yeah, we just kind of <laughs> migrated to the area. I love it. So, um, how long have you been here then? What year did you move here? Then? It's been about 13, 14 years or so uh, that I've been here. So, you're a, you're a transplant. You're now, you're now a Duncanite. <laughs> Pretty true much. and true. So, what, um, what all did your military career consist of? Um, well, I originally left. Um, from Dallas, Texas in 1994, uh, I enlisted in the United States Navy. I was actually one of the few fortunate ones that made it to the Orlando, Florida training center mm -hmm. uh, before they ended up closing it down. I started out going in as an intelligence specialist. Um, did, a, did, a, did a few tours and everywhere, you know, through that, but then ended up settling in and changing over to a information systems technician, which is IT, computer, computer and message mm -hmm. traffic, right. uh, also the Navy's version of a radio man. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there was anybody broadcasting a signal, I was usually there, you know, on it as well. Right. Uh -huh. uh, through that one, I ended up uh, being stationed out with Task Force 76, which is Amphib Group 1 out of Okinawa, Japan. Uh, a lot of the World War II veterans and stuff were recognized mm -hmm. because Task Force 76 was known as the little insane guys that would not quit poking the Japanese loop. You know, we the engine they would stop, right? They would send the uh, the carriers around one direction to the north, and mm -hmm. then Task Force 76 would send their little destroyers out to the south, pretending like the carrier was down there to draw everybody at them, just going, "Ah, we got this. Don't worry about it." <laughs> And I think that's still their motto this really, day. <laughs> really? So whenever in all of your travels in the military, where was, what would you say was your favorite place that you spent time or? or Ooh, that's a toss up there. Um, or where all did you go? Let's just say that. The easiest way to say it is where did I not go? And that would be <laughs> Ireland and Scotland. Those are the only two places I have not been at all Man. yet. Did you go to Iceland? Uh, actually, we've been through, uh, we had to stop in Iceland uh, to drop off a passenger we were ferrying. It was a VIP passenger we were dropping off. on the way? Yep. Uh, I've actually stopped in in Antarctica. There's mm -hmm. a science station down there. We got diverted to resupply. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite places personally that we went uh, was actually in Ecuador. We, uh, really? We pulled in down there during the South American uh, Unitas cruise, mm -hmm. as we called it. And there was a school in the area that needed some fixing up. So a bunch of us from the ship decided to go out there and patch it up. Slam it in. It, you know, and it right. worked like that. But watching all the kids run up like we were some celebrities, you know, asking for autographs and everything. And we're like, we're just, and they're like, yeah, the school needed repairs for years. You guys suddenly showed up to just, do they're it. They're superheroes. You know, and we were just like, oh, we didn't realize. We were just bored one day and decided we're going to do this. Yeah. Um. That's heartwarming. Then we also had, I mean, things like being in Japan, uh, stationed in Okinawa, especially. Mm -hmm. On the southern half of the island, it is a more modern, Americanized right. style of right. life. But once you cross to the north half of that island, it is like you have stepped completely back in time. World. It The old temples still stand. It's really? more like a feudal, a mm -hmm. lot fewer people speak English. Mm -hmm. But it, quieter it's a, and slower. Yeah, it's a beautiful, slow paced. And Interesting. I think that's one of the reasons I went from big cities to smaller towns is I got used to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I can't imagine traveling like that from time or place to place and just. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the were you on a ship the whole time then? Or? Yes, I was stationed on ships. The first one was an old Spruance class destroyer from World War II, the USS Comte de Gras 974. Then I ended up on the USS Valley Forge CG-50 out of California. That's when we did a lot of the uh, med pack cruises and stuff. Mm -hmm. We were heading through the Gulf and, and right. you know, the Mediterranean areas. And then, like I said, I, I transferred over and became a communication specialist and ended up out in Okinawa with Amphib Group 1, which 
I mean, those guys, they were the best people to work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's 11 different ships in that group and working with the Admiral uh, and everything out there, you're on every one of them yeah. at some point in time. Yeah. The Marines are always just a fun time to be around. Marines are, yeah, they're a whole other breed too. My uh, brother was actually in the Navy. He was on the Lincoln. Oh, he spent gosh. time on the Lincoln and he was there at the, the tsunami. Uh, that yeah. was his time. Yeah. So uh, that was his only like real thing that he ever saw because he wasn't actually in wartime or anything. Well, that's but. one of the few things that I agree with. Uh, tsunamis are a, a I happened to be in country uh, in Thailand when a tsunami hit out there. Mm -hmm. And we were lucky that we were, I don't know, there was five of us left in the country at the time that we were there for Google board game things that we do just mm -hmm. to, you know, have fun right. and, and, and train other countries. Mm -hmm. And most of the things have been shipped out, but five of us stayed behind to finish getting the rest of the equipment out when that tsunami hit. So we ran down to the affected area and helped clean up mm -hmm. as much as we could before mm -hmm. we had to take off. Yeah. So yeah, they they're they're a rough thing to go through. Yeah, uh, it was yeah. Wow, just thinking of it because the Navy and growing up in Tornado Alley mm -hmm. as well. Right, been eighteen tornadoes, uh, twenty seven hurricanes, fifteen typhoons, the one tsunami, been through numerous earthquakes. I mean, there's with the exception of a. Zest. With the exception of a volcanic eruption, I think I've pretty much been in sight for a lot of different natural disasters. If you guys need to know how to prepare, <laughs> he's your man. He knows how to survive and prepare. Good, good at surviving. Yeah, That's we're still here. <laughs> we're still here. So what things do you think you would say is your most loved things of the military? Or the things that, you know, serving the military? Honestly, um, from a personal standpoint, especially for people that, that love to have a foundation of structure, but something different every day. Mm -hmm. uh, things like, you know, you always know exactly what time to, to muster up in the morning and meet because it's a set time. Right. You know exactly when meals are going because they're only served at certain times. Mm -hmm. So you have that steady structure that you can rely on and stuff. But every day when you get there and they tell you what you're doing for the day, mm -hmm. you never know. One day you might be picking up trash on the side of the road because the captain is bored and says, do this instead. Right. And then the next day you're out in the field shooting things or you're heading out over to another country because they need you to bring them water. So you have your backbone and pretty much wherever you land is where you land. Absolutely. And the fact that you know that when you go into work, like you hear a lot of stories in the corporate world, you go in, there's all these people that are against each other trying to fight for promotions and Hat stuff. fights and everything else. However, in the military, predominantly, it's not 100% the case because mm -hmm. there's always good and bad people, mm -hmm. but Generally speaking, you walk into your unit, you know your job, everybody knows their job, and as soon as theirs is done, they know, hey, you might need help with that, and they're on it without you even having to think about it mm -hmm. because everybody a team. succeeds right. or nobody succeeds. Right. Huh. I like that. I do like that because everyone does need everybody. Nothing works if you don't have anybody. Yeah. I mean, you have to have people to help you and whether you ask for it or not. Right. As the as the quote uh, that most people know goes, no man is an island. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Which kind of brings me to the um, <clears throat> giving giving back and serving. What all do you guys um, offer? Or uh, with that, with the American Legion itself, and uh, you know, our post is currently this year we've been revitalizing and rebuilding, trying to get more of a structure to have, be able to provide more of the things that. We normally would mm -hmm. but in general nationwide actually even beyond that uh the american legion and here's the misconception that blows a lot of people's minds we're not just for veterans you know they a lot of people are like yeah they're a veterans organization it's the truth is we're for a communities as well um the four pillars that we support as yes national defense and veterans rehabilitation and mm -hmm. assistance but the next one that comes after that is our youth and children's programs. You know, the scouts. We've had a big hand in, you know, Boy building scouts, and maintaining yes. and even creating the Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. just getting everything together. For right. Uh, now, just scouts, you know. Right. Just, yeah. They, they kind of get away with they're that. They're finally getting right. everything blended. Together. Right. Um, people don't realize that the creation of the Department of Veterans Affairs was the American Legion. Okay. Uh, even this day, we still keep tabs on them and mm -hmm. things get shifted. We don't actually control them, but we're every day we have a commander out in national 
that at certain times when he gets to do it, he goes right before the House and the Senate and says, this is what our veterans need. This is what our communities need. This is what is going on, mm -hmm. and you need to fix this. Right. And Speaking up and saying. When he walks in and starts to speak, he is speaking with the voice of seven million votes coming just from the veterans and family members that are part of the American Legion family. And it opens a few eyes. You know, it, it really gets their attention. Some eyes need to be open sometimes. I, that I, is true. That but surprised. as for things that we offer, um, well, on Tuesdays and Thursdays when our post is open, we're always there. If somebody just needs a safe place, just okay. come in. You're in a safe location. If you need any help or anything at all, if you feel like you're being followed or anything, it's a safe location. We will have. Okay. And are you still there on the highway? Yes. Okay. Uh, 355 South Highway 81. Uh, right across the street from us is the Duncan Martial Arts Academy and uh, the Mr. Mary Jane Dispensary. And then on either side of us, there is a uh, a nursery that's still right next to us. There's right South there. 81 there. Uh, the, the dog groomers are there. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, there's a hair salon. And okay. okay. So we're all right there, right, there. right around the uh, Elm Street and uh, 81. Okay. Um, so Tuesdays and Thursdays? That's usually when we have the post open. I usually hold training Tuesdays. I'm there from about noon until sometimes possibly 10 or 11 at night, depending mm -hmm. on if it's meeting night or not. Um, and then on Thursdays, which we call Thirsty Thursdays, we keep the coffee bar running. Uh, where we have, you know, caramel cappuccino, French vanilla cappuccino, hot chocolate, light roast, medium roast, dark so Bailey, roast. Bailey, we're going to get coffee on Thursday. Oh, and great. that's about 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. is usually when I'm there. Now, we may have people there longer or shorter, but generally, if it's going to be shorter, we leave notes at the door saying, hey, give us a call. That way you know, yeah. Um, additionally, uh, recently, we've had one of our members who's a yoga instructor out in Marlow start holding a weekly yoga class. At really? Um, it's, uh, it shifts between Wednesdays and Fridays when she's available, mm -hmm. but we try to get the information out on our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a quick little yin yoga. Uh, she's also going to be trying to work in as she's gotten certified in uh, chair yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, a the lot of the veterans and parts of the mm -hmm. post, they can keep trying to keep up their right. health. Um, but uh, beyond that, we also have, oh, geez, we're every Duncan football home game where they're raising the flag, rolling the flag. We run a booth. We even, this year, we've been selling a few concessions and stuff mm -hmm. just to kind of keep everybody hydrated. Right. Um, we're working with the booster club with the soccer teams and, and things like that, trying to get most of our sports covered. Because like the wrestling team, they've been mm -hmm. doing amazing things, but right. they don't have a lot of support right. financially. Right. So we're trying to correct that with the community behind mm -hmm. them as well, uh, especially the Duncan Bayman, the marching band. Yes. They win competitions they have, year they after win year. year after year. And they have minimal support except for the Parents and, and, parents and families, that, yes, you know, that are, that are doing mm -hmm. all of it out of pocket, mm -hmm. trying to, and we really want to rally the community because if we can get support behind them, imagine how much further they could reach. I mean, we're already hitting state, right. you know, awards at first right, place. Right, right. Why not take them to national competitions and mm -hmm. get them really to mm -hmm. the And take those kids and make it worth it. Absolutely. Because they work, for, they work hard for it. And it shows because they do win. You know, and then with and the community comes, behind them, and when it comes to the schools, uh, outside of the band and stuff like that, uh, a lot of people don't realize we hold oratorical contests where all the subject matter is on U.S. Constitution and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, any high school student that wishes to uh, compete in it uh, in December is when we'll be holding things at the post level for them to, to come in and, and prepare a speech. It's an eight to 10 minute prepared speech and a three to five minute quick react speech that when you have a subject at the last moment, they have to talk. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people are like, well, big deal, you know, what good do they get out of it? Now, it may not seem at the post level like much, but once they move up to the state level and compete there, they start getting noticed and they start getting scholarships thrown at them. Uh, if they actually compete well enough that they make it to even just showing up at the national competition, mm -hmm. that is an automatic $2,000 in scholarships that are guaranteed. Really? Uh, if they even make it through the first round to the second round, they add another $2,000 in scholarships guaranteed across the board. Goodness. Um, if the, the top three places 
nationally for the oratorical contest, which I've got you know a bit yeah. of a bit of a flyer here okay. that shows uh, a uh -huh. bit about it. Um, the top three performers that win first, second, and third place, you're looking at twenty five, twenty two thousand five hundred, and twenty thousand dollars in scholarships immediately out the door. Uh, just that's nationwide handed over. Good. You're going to college, right? For this. Yeah. At least that will be covered enough. Yeah. And they're also usually after making it to that level, they're asked to travel around to a lot of Legion posts and, and, and travel around the country, mm -hmm. giving these speeches and talking about it to the bring it back okay. to everybody as to what the importance of the Constitution is. It's a constitutional speech. Most, uh, mm -hmm. Almost all of them are, are on the Constitution mm -hmm. or on uh, how does the Constitution relate to what's going on today type things. Right. You know, it relates around and about yeah. that. Uh, you can actually go on to legion.org and see the videos oh, or even look speeches. up on YouTube for, for oh, American nice. Legion Oratorical and you can see all the winning videos throughout the years mm -hmm. and stuff like that and see the kind of speeches that, that, that have come up, with. come up with that. I love that. So they go from a local level then on to a state level yes. versus then national? Yes. Okay. Uh, they come in, you know, to the post. That way, if we have three or four from a high school mm -hmm. that want to yeah, do it, kind of the best out of the three, send them up to the state right. level. They compete with schools all over the state. Mm -hmm. And then we pick, um, yeah. I think it's one or two, might even be a third. That they'll submit for national oh. and national will pick, hey, these are the 50 students we have in these states, mm -hmm. sometimes more, but yeah. And then they, they go out. They are actually yeah. sent out to Washington, D.C. sometimes to do all this. Really? Huh. So, in all in all, how many legions are there? Um, okay. Uh, the number of posts for all this year. That, well, no, the, the posts for the American Legion are the lowest local, okay. local most concentrated okay. level. And that's what most people will interact with is one post, maybe two at a time, unless they start getting into leadership roles. Okay. Um, Trying to come up with that number is next to impossible. It's always uh, in flux, but coming from the top down, of course, there's only one national because it's right. up in Indianapolis and we're one country. Mm -hmm. But under that, we actually have 55 departments, which that's the 50 states that okay. all have their own department of the American Legion. Okay. Um, on top of that, there is one for DC itself, since mm -hmm. there's a district. Uh, Puerto Rico, which okay. is U.S. territory. France, which is where all of this began, uh, which I'll go to that in just a moment. <laughs> you can and see then, my uh, the Philippines, because we have a lot of retired military that settled there and they opened up their posts. Okay. And then the final department is one that just changed. It was the Department of Mexico, mm -hmm. but since we have posts that have popped up in Costa Rica, Guatemala, and all sorts of South American mm -hmm. countries, We've actually, they just recently changed it to the Department of Latin America. Okay. So there are 55 departments, and under that, any department will have a varying number of districts breaking down to the smaller the area and then down to the posts. Uh, for our district itself, uh, Six Bravo is the district we're listed as under the Oklahoma Department. Mm -hmm. There are seven posts. Uh, there is uh, Chickasha, Lawton. Uh, then we have Tuttle, Fletcher, Comanche, Marlowe, and Duncan. And that's considered the district. Uh, that is the district uh, 6B area and then, and then those seven down. posts. You know, most people in Duncan will interact with us here in Duncan mm -hmm. unless they prefer to go to Marlowe or Comanche. Mm -hmm. uh, Lawton is a newer post that reopened up earlier this year. Does Lawton just have one? Uh, yes, they, they've got one that they've reestablished uh, earlier this year, and it's already just leaps and bounds growing. Uh, a lot of the veterans, especially out of Fort Sill. And a lot, a big help of that, as well as the fact that active duty can join us. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only requirement is serve a day of active duty. Right. You know, make it through boot camp, serve a day of active right. duty, and not have anything like a dishonorable like an, discharge. I was say dishonorable. You know, uh, active duty, you're welcome, you know, to join us, join right. in our programs, interact, mm -hmm. get everything going. Mm -hmm. And then once you get discharged, we're right here with all of the different abilities <clears throat> with the VA and everything. So if someone wants to walk in through your door, do they have to show membership or how does that work? Do you have to prove? Well, um, I mean, I know you wouldn't turn anyone away necessarily. Yeah, we don't turn anybody away but, coming I mean, in to have a cup right, of coffee. Right, right. But 
uh, if they're looking to get involved, well, we actually keep our meetings open completely to the public. So we hide absolutely nothing. From the Everything's transparent. Even, no matter who comes in, if they say, hey, we want to see your you know, financial report for the month. Here it is, five seconds. Here you go. Right. We keep them on hand. But um, if they're wanting to actually get involved to the point where they're voting on issues for our post, then they would have to actually prove membership to our post, which is just a simple ID card that we give them anyway. You know that every time they pay their dues for the year, yeah. they get a new one. Uh -huh. um, if they're from another post and they're just wanting to come in and chat stuff like that, we don't make them prove it because nine times out of ten, who's going to really lie about it's it? Going to come in and say that, right? Yeah. Right. Um, the only time we actually really require any kind of proof of the not just that you serve, but actually of the conditions of service that you were on our leader mm -hmm, service, right. if you actually go for officer positions, especially district or high level, mm -hmm. you have to prove that it was an honorable discharge and you have to prove that you went through the basic training for the American Legion, which is an online course. Oh, okay. You know, other than that, no, if you're a veteran that you've served or you just come in off the street and say, look, I'm just a member of the community and I want to do something to help. Right. We got a spot for you. Right. Yeah. We'll ask you if you're related to a veteran, if you are, we have the American Legion Auxiliary that you can join and actually officially be part of the American Legion family. Um, even though a lot of people have started saying it's a little bit antiqu antiquated, we were working on the verbiage for it. We have the Sons of the American Legion, which okay. this was created back in 1919, 1920. So it's, it's just a baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, it's for the, the direct male descendants of veterans mm -hmm. up to five generations. Okay. That they they actually train alongside us. They learn how to do the color guard, rifle team stuff, and they so do it's all passed on. Do. Right. And then we also have the American Legion Riders, which is our motorcycle enthusiasts. Uh, they actually are a big proponent of doing motorcycle rallies across country and raising hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars for children, welfare funds, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, the things that you do, you just you're you're all just active. I mean, you're just out in the community. You're just trying to help and don't turn anyone away. And we were talking before we went live about all of the different things you know that that we've seen. You know, with veterans and things, the way people have kind of shifted in the way that they know now how veterans struggle sometimes after they come home from serving or after being discharged and. The fact that you guys are out there helping regardless you know it could be it could be a wife of a discharged you know serviceman or something but you know so kudos <laughs> it's, it's I, think it's, I think it's just a great great thing as the past department commander jim quinn he was last year's department commander that was in charge of the entire state as he put it it's service after service it, that's what we enjoy to do mm -hmm. Uh, this year, the elected uh, department commander, Brett Martin, um, along with being a big proponent of the Be The One campaign, he has come up with the, the four pillars of hope. Uh, that way, you know, because we have the four pillars that we follow, mm -hmm. and they're, they're setting up as four pillars of hope so that people know that we're here to bring you the hope, you know. Uh, additionally, as he likes to put it, our job anymore that we take up as we become members is to just change lives and save lives. No matter who they are, we need to change lives and save lives. That's not getting any chills. Actually, it did because you do. I mean, whenever you join the military, <clears throat> you're doing it because you have a love of country, of man, and that never stops, whether you're serving and actively or you're not. I mean, that just never leaves you, and it takes a certain type of person, I believe, to even volunteer to sign up to do that because it's not like we're in a draft or anything right now you know that type of situation where you're going to just be pulled in against your will or not know what's going on you're signing up and you know what you're getting into and still even after you're not actively involved in the military per se you're still out there and just Absolutely. i mean you just it's just a just i like it it's one of those that, that it's a certain type but well not only that but people don't understand it the fundamental change a person goes through when they go through something like boot camp and, and join the military. Everything stripped away. Everything you've learned in the last 18, you know, plus years of your life mm -hmm. before you walking into boot camp needs to be unlearned. Because yes, you may be doing it a way that works, mm -hmm. but you're not doing it the, the way that mm -hmm. it needs to work. Mm -hmm. um, that level of coordination uh 
it, it really instills the ability that our military forces have the advantage of. You can take a guy right out of Fort Sill and drop him down in the middle of Afghanistan with soldiers uh, of the army that are in, you know, from Washington State, from, from Oregon, Not even or anywhere that he never met them a day before in his life. Mm -hmm. They all know their job. They all can function properly because they all trust each other. Whereas you're not going to get that in a normal, you know, mm -hmm. if you situation. were to throw four people in the car and say yeah. travel cross country, you'd be like, mm, I'm yeah, that person you. is going to complain that they're driving too much. Another person saying they don't like the way that person drives. Right. Another person is too right. hot. Right. Music sucks. Everybody's going to have a mm -hmm. different. In the military, they teach you the exact steps to go through so that during that mission, nobody has to worry about anything other than your exact job. I mean, what if someone was had the same like title or position? Would there be uh, that actually does come up like um, using Navy ranks because that's what I'm most familiar mm -hmm. with. Um, third class pay officers, which is an E4 rank um, enlisted level four. If you have two of them in a situation that they have exact same rank, nobody's been placed in charge and mm -hmm. in a position of leadership right. over the other, then they both look at each other and go, all right, how long you been in? Oh, you've been in four years. I've been in three years. All right, you win. You're four years. You, you're in charge. Just you know, whoever's been in longest or whoever's appointed to the place. Okay. Um, as a second class petty officer, when I was out at uh, the uh, Task Force 76, one of my jobs actually placed me in a position of authority where I could tell people of a higher rank, you will do this. And they had to listen to it because that was the authority I was given by the admiral in charge. But, the one above you. but those are rare instances. Right, right. So it's usually, as we love to do it the most in the military, sometimes when like, a, especially somebody who knows a smaller, uh, younger rank uh -huh. going, hey, you know, why do we have to do it this way? We immediately cover up our city and go, well, I'll flip you for it. Oh, I win. You know, <laughs> I outrank you. Right, you go right. Again. Yeah, we all know where we stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not to be jerks. It's just we've been at it so much longer. We've, we've learned so much more and gone through so much more that we're the one that knows. Mm -hmm. I know you have questions, but now is not the time to ask it. Right. After we get done, come ask me. Right. Later. When you get that we'll many strikes, it. Well, you'll understand. And we'll explain it later. Yeah, we'll like, explain it. Even if it's at the end of the day, come back and ask me at an appropriate time. Right. Not right not before she, Right, <laughs> right. Exactly. <clears throat> so let's see here. Um, we have done that. How anything? Oh, it says here the biggest success of the Legion. What would you call? Oh wow! Uh, if you can, just for one, or maybe your well, top three. That, that, that it's been over a hundred year organization. Reaching back that far, we're looking at. I mean, the American Legion was founded. Oh, like I said, I was going to tell you earlier. It was originally founded and thought up in 1919 in Paris. It was uh, 40 officers mm -hmm. that. Coming toward the end, you know, World War One ending, they're getting ready to come home. Go, what are we going to do after we're back? Mm -hmm. And then they decided, you know, and worked on, hey, we'll work on our communities around us, try to build up our communities to be a strong place mm -hmm. that's safe and secure, so right. therefore our nation will be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time they got back, you know, to the state side, uh, they met up again in Minneapolis. Uh, by then, it was forty officers, fifty enlisted men that had gotten together. Um, it expanded from there. They eventually settled on Indianapolis being the yeah, nation sure. headquarters for it. And it just kept expanding from there. One of the, I mean, trying to trying to pinpoint any of the big wins when it comes to American Legion itself. Like I said, they created the Department of Veterans Affairs. They had a hand in creating the American Heart Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the Boy Scouts. So even it's, though they're not there in the forefront, those like, those things would not be necessarily where they are today or even about if it wasn't for the American the, Legion. The Legion members that, that got together and said, hey, this is something our community needs. Mm -hmm. Let's set this up. And then did, they just expanded it from there. Mm -hmm. And that's the unique thing, the way the American Legion works. National doesn't just sit around saying, hey, we're doing this now. You should follow suit. Right. It's actually exactly the opposite. All the posts at the local level looking out to our community goes, oh, this is what we need to do and how it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We'll start doing that here. And when we show it works, we'll tell our district. And then they'll be like, all right, we'll do that to the rest right. of the posts. And once they prove it works, they tell state. State does it. Oh, it works in Oklahoma. They start telling it's all the that. other states. Mm -hmm. And when everybody starts doing a bit more of it, that's when we hand it to national and say, this is what works. Right. And they go, all right, we'll make it that to be the rule. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, it's a very grassroots style right. organization. Right. Um, 
a lot of people, especially when I go around, you know, yeah, I'm the commander of the post, and they're like, oh, you really important. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not a leader. That is not the way the American Legion is set up. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm in charge. I make decisions, but I'm elected to serve. Mm -hmm. I serve my post. What right. the members want, regardless of my personal opinion, what mm -hmm. the members say they want, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. What the community says they need, that's what we focus on. Mm -hmm. And we do that all the way up through national. You know, yes, national, he's kicking the door in on council and Senate on Capitol Hill going, right. hey, you're going to fix it. Mm -hmm. But that's because he has all of us behind him on. going, he's, he can do that. Right. So how long are you elected for then? One year at a time. Um, at the post level, we can be reelected multiple times, uh, even in consecutive elections. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I was just elected in May of this year. So upcoming again in May will be mm -hmm. our next election. Uh, once you get up to the department level, uh, you get elected for one year. That's it. You you do everything you can that year. Right. And you move out of the way on. so that we don't stagnate right. and have somebody right. in a place that starts to lose track. Right. Uh, same with national level. It's a year and done. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not just stuck with, oh, I was the commander for a year, I can do nothing else. It, right. You know, you can be like the chaplain, positive. you can be the adjutant, you can there's be, different there's all sorts of different things. positions you can be. Mm -hmm. And then you, you can work your way through them year after year. But at the post level, since we're a very small, so, we don't have a lot of people mm -hmm. coming in, then we usually just hey, if somebody's really great at the position, as long as nobody else is challenging for it, we'll just keep going through mm -hmm. and bring in a nomination. All right, do another election. You know. So and were you nominated or did you decide to run? Oh, or how no, does that it, work? It, nomination. You, nomination. You can, you can indicate to people, I'm willing to take this job if anybody wants mm -hmm. me to do it. Mm -hmm. But you can't just say, hey, I'm running. Okay. You know, it, somebody has to nominate you from the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the members has to put forth and say, yeah, I, I nominate him to do mm -hmm. it. Somebody else has to second it, saying, "Yeah, there's at least one other person to post that agrees." Thinks you can do it, and then they do a general vote. If there's more than one person, just like an election, let's vote for this okay. one, vote for that one, mm -hmm. and it just takes a majority. Was there anyone that ran against you, or this year? No. Did, was there a, was the position empty, or how did that work? How did it come uh, well, we had a we had an uh, issue uh, staffing wise and stuff with things going on. I ended up in March. Uh, getting nominated and placed by the members as the acting commander. Mm -hmm. um, we started working to improve and, and rebuild the post at that point. And by the time May hit for the elections, nobody else really wanted. It. They, they, they were happy, happy with the way things were going. Mm -hmm. And they knew the plans that we had put out to keep going. So they, they were like, no, nah, nobody wants right. to run against you. We're just going to elect you to the position. Uh, Continue. So I was really fortunate with that one. Hopefully, I'm still pleasing the members of the post and the community at large. We've been pushing very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, at the post level itself, uh, one of the pictures that's in our flyer. Right here. Well, one of the pictures that's in our flyer here that I've got set up mm -hmm. for everybody else to see. Um, at the end of last school year, uh, the award ceremony that they have done in high school. Okay. There was a young like student. graduation? Yeah. Well, right before graduation when they're announcing who's got scholarships. Oh, the scholarship. Like that. Okay. Uh, there was a young man, uh, Devin Busby. Mm -hmm. A lot of people around town knew him from working at Rib Crib and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. He was always a, a bright, smiling, you know, trying his hardest on everything. Mm -hmm. Well, what a lot of people didn't understand, he was actually battling cancer. Uh, he, he, you he and Sarge, yeah, he was, mm -hmm. he was a student at, at Duncan. He was, he was at Duncan High. He was uh, working at Rib Crib at the time to try, try to help his family mm -hmm. and everything, and pushing through all of this while battling Ewing sarcoma, which is a bone cancer. Painful. Very. And, mm -hmm. and keeping positive. I mean, a lot of people, you know, other than losing hair, a lot of people didn't realize there was something wrong mm -hmm. unless he was getting close to chemo and needing mm -hmm. another treatment. You know, right. Sick. At least from everybody I was talking to about it. Mm -hmm. Well, we got word because every year the, the teachers um, they elect one student that has overcome adversity through the year when it comes to graduation, and they put forth his name. That's how we discovered everything about him. Well, at the award ceremony when we met him, we found out his uh, grandfathership. Mm -hmm. uh, so our members got together and we actually brought him in as a full member of the Sons of the Legion and paid for two years of his admittance as Sons of the Legion. 
Uh, we presented him with the Joe Moore Award, uh, which is what the teachers voted on. Mm -hmm. They picked the student that covered the adversity, and that award is named after uh, Franklin Moore, who everybody called old Joe's, old mm -hmm. Joe's, so Joe Moore. He was actually born and raised here in Duncan. Mm -hmm. He became a naval aviator, and in the 40s, uh, I believe it was 43, but I'm not 100% sure at the moment on the date, uh, he was in a training accident off the coast of Florida while flying and passed away. Mm -hmm. His family back here in Duncan set up the Joe Moore uh, Foundation okay. and set up this award to honor the student that COVID comes adversity, and Devin Busby was last year's recipient, uh, of, recipient of it. It was an honor to see him. Uh, right after that ceremony, actually, is he had to head back to Oklahoma City for another five days of treatment, so we were able to meet with him up there. Mm -hmm. But he has been an abundantly joyful individual. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the last I heard from him, he was actually improving so much, they allowed him to get back into the gym, and he is able to actually face his dream goal he's uh, entered college and he's working on becoming a physical therapist and this is him in the photograph uh, right down here at the the bottom right that's him mm -hmm. along with uh members of my staff uh mm -hmm. myself the gentleman that's standing next to him in that picture is our one of our longest serving duncan members uh larry davidson Oh, he, I, used to I be, know you. he used to be a postal worker uh -huh. here yes. he has been yes. with us for 53 years at our post he has raised the flag over Duncan home games for 53 years, missing a total of one season. And that was last year when he fell and um, fractured a vertebra in his neck right after the first game and missed the rest of the season. But after, other than that, he has never missed a home game for the Duncan Raising teams. the flag for that. And he's been at every flag ceremony for it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, in the center picture over here, that's him. That's him there. That's him, myself, and and another of our members, Alan Ross, a former vice commander of ours. That that he, the three of us are in every every mm -hmm. uh, yeah event. Home flag or home game. Yes. Uh, the other pictures in there, um, we have the uh, Boy Scout troop, uh, Scout Troop Forty Four Thirty Four here in Duncan. Uh, they joined us on Flag Day. Uh, we did a flag retirement ceremony along with they assisted us in our post everlasting, which is our version of a funeral to honor mm -hmm. veterans that mm -hmm. passed. Mm -hmm. um, another picture there is uh, a individual of ours, a good member and a friend of mine, uh, Richard Caverty, is at the uh, dehydrators re uh, rehydration oh, station. station. Uh, he was out there for that because, well, luckily, he has trouble with mobility because, you know, old issues with legs, being a tank recovery mm -hmm. specialist, right. you can get beat up. But fortunately, we were actually right around the corner from his house where our station was, so we were able to get him mm -hmm. over there, and he was tickled. I loved it. So oh, he, he had a blast mm -hmm. interacting with everybody. Then um, the final picture that's on here is... Our uh, our post adjutant, April Markham Sanchez, uh, she mm -hmm. is the heart and soul of our post. When it comes to any information, everything has to go through her. Mm -hmm. uh, everything I do, every bit of paperwork I generate, I have to send it to her because she needs to know everything. Right, everything. And she's also, as, as I like to say, my little icebreaker. Uh, she'll go out in the public and just randomly out of nowhere, hey, how are you? Are you a veteran? Hey, do you know a veteran? And just break the ice with everybody. And she's, then, that one. she's the one that will do that. And she will just chase people down to go, hey, I saw you had a, a military hat on. Thanks, you know. <laughs> right. And then along with her is our, our current vice commander, um, uh, Edwin DeLeon. Uh, they were at the back to school bash this year on that one. Mm. Is that the mall? Yes, the that, is at, that was at the Chisholm mm -hmm. Mall. Uh, we have been so fortunate working with the Chisholm Mall uh, when they started trying to revitalize at the mm -hmm. same time we were. Mm -hmm. They started sponsoring uh, events that we were wanting to hold, and every event that they hold, they have kept a spot open and said, hey, you know, are you guys willing? Right. And we're absolutely on board with, I mean, it's community for community, we're there. Mm -hmm. we, that's the way it should be. Absolutely. <clears throat> That is the way it should be. Um, do you have any uh, things, any events coming up? Actually, yes, uh, quite a few, actually. Um, let's see, if I remember Actually. correctly, the Comanche, the, the Comanche's um, Fall Festival just got delayed. They just put out, because it was going to be cold this weekend, they moved it to next weekend. Uh -huh. So that event's been delayed. However, 
uh, October 31st, the mall is doing trick-or-treating. Mm -hmm. So from 5 to 8 p.m., we will be out there. Uh, we have some community members that are going to be set up beside us as well, wearing costumes and, and passing out candy and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got, let's see. And that'll be indoors? Yeah, that'll be in indoors from 5 to 8 p.m. on okay. the 31st, okay. which is a Tuesday. Okay. And then shortly after that, our next event beyond the fall festival, when it actually goes through at Comanche, mm -hmm. will be the upcoming Veterans Day event itself. Uh, I've got one here for you, okay. and then one I'll stand up here quick for. Are you going to sit up on this? Oh, like, I'll sit up here. For uh, you. Bailey, you can zoom in on that. If you'd like. Uh, this will be November 11th, which is Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. um, the mall is sponsoring it. They have generously said, hey, you have one of the inside of the mall. Do what you need to do. Just clean up after. Really? So we're like, all right, we'll do that. So from it's noon to like four, have an open yeah, season there. Pretty much. Uh, from noon to four, we're setting up. We've got quite a few vendors that have that have been interested, including very uh, small local vendors that handcraft items that are going to come out and, and sell them. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got our American Legion host raffle going on right now. The tickets are on sale. They've been on sale usually at football games and everything else, but anybody can come into the post and buy them. Okay. The prizes for it right now, we have a gas powered electric generator and a infrared heater preparing for winter. Those would come in handy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, for that, our tickets are five dollars. Uh, Ten dollars will give you three tickets, mm -hmm. and twenty dollars will give you seven tickets that you can divide between the prizes. However, you want. Oh, okay. Uh, that way, you know, you have a chance right. to go in twenty dollars. Well, you might win both. Right. You know? Right. And then, do you have to be um, you do not there have to be to present? We... Uh, we write down your name and number on the ticket. Okay. And then when we draw you. this at at probably about 345 right before the end mm -hmm. of the event we'll draw the names and immediately be on the phone calling saying hey you know, you're the congratulations one. uh we actually at the post have constantly got raffles going on but we actually hold the drawings three times a year oh, okay. um, veterans day we have one drawing mm -hmm. then we'll start our next raffle march 15th which is the american legion birthday mm -hmm. we have our celebration then. then and we drew it and then fourth of july is our we usually at red bud park Marlo. on the fourth in Marlowe, and that's where we draw there the last one at fourth of july we raffled off a um a rifle and a pistol and people were overjoyed with it oh, they, sure. they were excited when we called to say they want the, the lady i called that won the pistol when we called her, she said, you're kidding. And I was like, no, we won. And then I actually had to hold the phone out like this as my adjective and I are driving down the road and still trying to plug our ears because the amount of eruption and screams in the background of people cheering was overwhelming. She called the crawl crew there. Oh, there was at least six people on that line cheering. <laughs> and they all had to get on the phone. Is this real? We, she actually went. We're like, yes, meet us up at Murph's Gun. She can pick up the weapon. And Pinch yeah. me. I'm not, I'm not yeah, screaming. It was. It was that way. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. Well, it's good to make someone's day like that, though. But uh, in these trifolds that I have up mm -hmm. that we pass out everywhere and stuff, we do have the listing of Meetings. all of our meetings uh -huh. um, that are upcoming this year. Uh, we do hold, is the easiest way to remember, the fourth Tuesday of any month, that's when we hold our meetings. We do them at noon for anybody that needs to come in early to hours. get their information. Mm -hmm. Uh, the members that come in at the noon meeting can record their votes for anything that's coming up at the 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. meeting. And then at the 7 p.m. meeting is when most of our members make it there. We go through everything that's going on, cast their votes. And, but this like I said, the general us. public is welcome at any point in mm -hmm. time. Then on the first Tuesday of any month at 6 p.m. is when my executive committee, the officers of the post meet. Normally, elected. Yeah, all of us are elected. Well, there are some appointed, like our chaplain, our um, sergeant at arms, which is master of ceremonies and, mm -hmm. and in charge of security mm -hmm. force and stuff. They are actually appointed by the commander, okay. but uh, most of the executive committee is elected. Plus, there are two members at large uh, that are not holding an officer position at the post, but they are elected to the executive committee to okay. hold decisions. Okay. Um, Normally, most posts will hold those as just closed sessions. Mm -hmm. We don't. We keep it open. The only thing is, is when we get to the point where we're actually about to cast our votes, we will step off into a different room to cast the votes and then come back and tell everybody the results. That way it keeps any kind of right. arguments out of the public. Right. Okay. But 
we keep everything open to the public there. Anybody's allowed to come in at any time. They can even ask questions near the end of the meeting. We'll actually open it up and say, does anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're open and available for everybody on those days. You're the first Tuesday, closed book, you're there. First, the first Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday is when we, we hold those meetings out for the public. Okay. And then what's the SAL? Oh, oh. <laughs> SAL is Sons of the American Legion. Okay. It's, it's the direct male descendants. Right. Of, five generations. Yes. Said. Up to five generations to qualify for it. Um, right now, our Sons of the American Legion is very small. Uh, we just got to nine members again in it. Um, and that's here locally. Yes, is that correct. Okay. Yes, that is absolutely here locally. They they come up to our post with us there. They meet there. Uh, and the things we're working on training them to do are all going to be local things here. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to come start and try to join us. Uh, matter of fact, a few of their members come out and run our booth with us out of the football game. Okay. Um, and then we also have the auxiliary, which right now we're looking for new members to the auxiliary. We are desperately low. Uh, we've got maybe two or three people that are really? like interested in the auxiliary, mm -hmm. which is just, it's any other related, you know, relations to a veteran, you know, whether it's a spouse, a mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, mm -hmm. we don't care if you're related to right. a vet in any way, right. if you want to help in the community, come in, you know. Right, just be a part of. Yes, and um, normally they are the ones that would be working and focusing more of their time and energy on Reminding us of what's going on community life. Community like outreach community. type things. Um, they, we don't keep them separate at all. It's not like they take care of the community, we take care of veterans. <laughs> okay. That's it's, not my job. Hey, we're, we're, we're concentrating on these things that are going on. I'm also monitoring the Ukraine thing and the you know, Gaza incident and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And every now and then the auxiliary just calls over and goes, hey, so and so we found out in town, you know, they're the ones that listen to the people in the community. Mm -hmm. Oh, we found an issue. It's over here. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we're like, oh, okay, put this on hold. We're on the way. Right, right. Take care of it. And local. then we all show up together. Uh, matter of fact, it's at the point where Oklahoma, we've been structured in such a way that if like here in the post, we come up against something, uh, I don't know if we can handle this. We put the word out to the district and they'll immediately tell the department and they said, no, we've got officers from Oklahoma City the, at the department level bringing everybody they can between there and right. here to say, hey, we're here. Right. What grab, do they need? Grab a brush, grab a broom, do whatever we need, you know. That is, that's amazing, though, that there's still people out there willing to do that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, like I said, uh, Commander Brett Martin of the, you know, state level, department mm -hmm. level has been a big proponent, and every member of his officer brigade up there are all just I mean, they are diehard Oklahomans. They are just diehard football fans, but at the same time, Oklahoma fans, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know exactly. For all of <laughs> you can ask the affiliation with that. I'm not going. I'm not going to pick and choose to cause any issues there, but <laughs> it, it 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 does turn out at a lot of our meetings. You hear a few different college chants right, going on. <laughs> right. So, at, um, during the time of COVID, did you guys see a lot of them close? A lot of the districts or the posts. We close? had a, quite a few posts that, that ended up closing. Um, we almost completely lost the Marlowe post. Um, we had uh, a post in Ryan that did close down. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that. And the other problem is a lot of our members that are current members are the aging veterans, of World War II, Korea, you know, Vietnam era. Yeah. And as we lose them, them, we haven't been in the actively spotlight searching. enough. Well, we've been actively searching constantly. We haven't been in the spotlight enough that we've attracted the younger veterans. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them don't realize that, yes, we were founded in 1919. Um, our post has been here in Duncan since 1922. So we finally hit 101. Right. Uh, they don't realize we've actually been altering at the times. Uh, our meetings, you don't have to be there in person. We actually do Google Meet and mm -hmm. have live, you know, you know, broadcasting of the meetings. Options. Um, we've been all over Facebook. I mean, we've got a we've got our Facebook mm -hmm. page, which on the very back of this trifold, it holds our Q, QR code. Yeah. that can uh -huh. link up instantly. Um, it's one of those that that we have been adjusting and growing with the times. I mm -hmm. mean, our 
our programs actually incorporate support for, for esports teams and stuff in the schools, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And that itself is more what current. has actually been paying, getting more attention with, oh, veterans go, hey, you actually You're got there. students? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, mm -hmm. you know what? Now I'll actually be interested right. in joining you. Right. So that's been the biggest problem is, is getting people to understand we do evolve with the times as right. well. It's not just an antiquated you bunch see, of my guys. My misconception was always like, oh, well, you know, it's like, Vietnam, you know, you had to like, you know, you had to be an active military or, you know, served your time. And so the fact that you don't have to be, you're here more community, you're military based, but nothing against community. the other organizations, right, right. but the American Legion, we were founded way before a lot of them <laughs> were arguably the biggest one around mm -hmm. and we do the community based like VFW, that is Veterans of Foreign War. They are combat veterans mm -hmm. that are there for right. each other because that's a whole different level right. of torment. Support they and everything else. Uh, so they are a little bit more closed off. They do help the community, mm -hmm. but their primary focus is veterans. It's, you mm -hmm. know, take care right. of each other. Right. Uh, disabled American veterans. They, they're a great organization and group of people. But again, they focus on disabled veterans. Right. Whereas... You know, we got AMVETS in the area. They're mm -hmm. another great group of people we coordinate with, and, and their organization, you know, mm -hmm. love them to death out there. They're great. Um, but then we're the more large, umbrella, generalized, all inclusive mm -hmm. group right. that everybody else is just a, like a, a little bit more restrictive or a little bit more focused level right. of care. But you could always point them if they oh, need it. Absolutely. You're there. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's not like if you join you're one, you're excluded right. from all the rest. Right. I mean, right. I've got my finance officer, lifetime member of the BFW, my adjutant. She, she's a member of the DAV. Mm -hmm. you know? The only thing we do is restrict you from if you're a commander at the BFW, you, you can't, can't be, be commander of the right. post at the same right. time. Right. Right. Keep it separate. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, I really appreciate you coming and talking to us. It's this has been very informative. Um, you guys, if you guys have any questions or you have any information or want to know any information, you guys are welcome to call up here to the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. We will have, I will get these pamphlets from him and so we'll have these here and have that information for you if you need it. And we can probably as well put information on our Facebook page and put that up for you as well. And we are going to give you these absolutely lovely photographs and pictures that have been done by our young ones there. And so I know they'll look great in the halls there at the, at the yes. And Edie said that great interview. It's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you, cuz. She said that she loves that it's service after service. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the one thing I do want to touch yes. on real quick as a final note, um, the big focus of the American Legion right now is to be the one campaign. And a lot of people have heard it. As a matter of fact, even any of the IndyCar uh, race uh, fans have been watching the number 10 Honda with Chip Nasty Racing having to be the one oh, on Legion on it. And a lot of people don't understand the what, be what it is. is now the i'm going to paraphrase and i'm pretty sure i'll get uh, answers back from him later as to whether i do this well enough or not our commander brett martin the way he puts it um it's not about the numbers 23 22 or even 17 which depending on who you ask it does how many veterans every day take their own lives because they've reached the end of their ropes none of those none of those numbers will actually matter if we all remember one simple number, and that's one, are you going to be the one person that makes the one phone call to check on one friend anywhere? Just say, are you okay? Is there any help that was needed? Is there anything you need at all? Are you doing all right? Are you doing a good thing? Right. One simple phone call could be the difference between life and death. And as Commander Martin says to all of us, if it's not going to be you, then who? And if it's not going to be now, when could you actually stand with us and be the one person that might save a life just by showing somebody they're not alone? And that's one of our biggest uh, dear, near and dear to our hearts. As a matter of fact, um, not too long ago, there was a veteran friend of mine. Uh, we, we were working hard getting him help and stuff, but he lost the fight. Uh, he didn't make it. Uh, I'm still in contact to this day with, with his girlfriend at the time who's still dealing with the fallout mm -hmm. from it. And mm -hmm. it tears lives apart. It does. 
Um, just recently on KSWO, there was another veteran. I spoke with him. He said it's okay to talk about it. Uh, that just had a recent interaction with the Duncan police uh, day before yesterday, uh, being suicidal, being mm -hmm. a veteran, you know, mm -hmm. that PTSD, everything. Mm -hmm. And this one, though, has been a fortunate tale. We were able to, the message came across my desk. We were able to get there in time. The Duncan Police Department had been outstanding, trying to work with everything, mm -hmm. um, along with uh, Duncan Regional Hospital stepped in. Uh, the update I can give right now with him, not only is he in a good place mentally at the moment, and he's not in any physical danger, mm -hmm. But we've already gotten word back from the Wounded Warrior Project, from the Department of Veterans Affairs itself. They are all over this, and he will be treated properly and taken care of. And it's just those that have probably seen the news report of, of the incident starting, uh, please understand out there, he is getting the help that he's uh, requested, and he is being taken care of properly. And we have to thank the community, mm -hmm. you know, Duncan Police Department, the Sheriff's Department jumping in as well to help out with him mm -hmm. uh, and giving him the respect to be able to focus himself and go, yes, I need this help. Right. And then as soon as he said those words, everybody flooded through the gates saying, hey, what here you, you are, we're we funding do. this, we're right. going to take care of that, right. you're covered. Right. Because sometimes they do this. They feel like they have no one. And There's no one in their corner. That would be the ultimate success, I could say, for us, especially here in Duncan, but the American Legion in general, is things like this that happen all over the country, whether they get talked about or not, this is the things that we live with. Mm -hmm. it, we don't let anybody, you know, everybody here is the motto, you know, never leave a you know soldier yeah. behind. Yeah. It, no one left behind. Or... We actually want to make sure that that is held to as right. a truth. Right. Right. Active or non still active, not active, reserves, even a community say, member yeah. related in any way. Hey, we're not letting you go. You're right. not gone. Our freedom is thankfully because of what you have given and served for, we could at least be there for them. But other than that, I appreciate you having us out here so we can talk. Anybody's you know invited anytime, like I said, Tuesdays noon to six usually. Okay. And Thursdays, nine to three, I'm usually sitting there. Anytime that open sign is on that post, somebody's sitting Bailey and I are going to come get coffee. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, because we like our coffee. So. And for those that don't <laughs> like coffee, we do keep a water cooler going. And I usually keep right about five different flavored drink mixes to go in it. So if you may you, have to drag her out of there then because you're speaking right up her alley over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, if you don't have anything else, and um, like I said before, you guys call here if you have or want to get any more information. And we will have these here for you and we'll give those to you. And um, before we do sign off, however, I want to let you know that next week, we will not have any trail talk. We're going to prepare this place for Christmas. So we're going to be decorating next week. And <laughs> we kind of like doing that here. <laughs> and also here on the 28th, which is this Saturday from five to seven, we are having our second annual Halloween on the trail event. So we are going to have our special campfire theater performance again with Jesse and Tex doing this. Uh, ghost stories. We're going to have fun games, art projects, and it's only a dollar admission per child. So very, very affordable to come in. Come on in. Um, now, not all of the, the, or the museum will be open. We will have certain parts restricted and to access, but we're going to have fun. We're going to have a photo booth. We're going to have candy. Uh, you'll get to see Miss Bailey and I. We will be here and along with our friends, and we're going to be having some fun. So we're going to come on out five to seven here on Saturday. And next week, like I said, no trail talk. So I think that's all of our announcements, right? Yes. And also note, if you were planning to spend your whole day doing Halloween activities between us and the Simmons Center, please go ahead and check out the Simmons Center's page. They have rescheduled their events. Oh, they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Or they've moved Just locations the on one of them. Oh, yes, and then the mall on, on Halloween. On Halloween, 31st, 5 to 8, uh, they're going to be handing out candy and, and people running around in costumes. Oh. Woohoo! Lots of fun activities, guys. Lots of times to get candy. So here, whenever we sign off, we say happy trails. So you ready? Yep. All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you, I guess, in two weeks. Yep. All right. Happy, happy trails. trails.